I don't know if you guys um, saw this, but today Microsoft uh, announced that they're looking to use Ethereum's blockchain to fight uh, piracy. So um, Ethereum is, is one of these coins that I, I was always very bullish on um, for a very long period of time. And I said it before that I think that it's probably the most important crypto. Bitcoin is the biggest crypto in the household name, but I think Ethereum is the most important crypto. So Ian and, and Hill, um, does this news mean anything to the crypto space? Does it give it a little bit more legitimacy? How, how do you feel about this? You know, I, I think it's important news. I think you combine that news with the fact that the Coinbase announced that that uh, Ethereum trading volume was higher than Bitcoin's in Q2. Um, obviously, that's big. That's big news when you're talking about trading volume. Um, so, so you know, we can get into uh, what I believe about the the the, the different value propositions um, of. The, the two the, between Ethereum and Bitcoin, but but ultimately they're both important and they're both important for different reasons and different ways and different use cases. Um, but, you know, there there's still some fundamentals you need to need to understand as you go on the journey. There's a reason why we don't offer Ethereum yet on our wallet and exchange. We don't offer it yet. We will at some point. We don't offer it yet. We could, but we don't. And 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 we can get into why that is. But Ethereum is very important and it's critical. Let's, let's, let's get into that. I know Ian will chime in, but before we, uh, yeah, since you had brought it up, why don't you offer Ethereum uh, on your platform? Because you know our platform is 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 geared towards folks that are entering the space. If you look at the adoption rate uh, of, of 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 folks in crypto in our community. Um, you know, it's very low community wide. Obviously, I think you get a large percentage of folks that that are well educated on your platform. So that doesn't necessarily count. But percentage wise for our community across across the country, it's you know, people argue it's either less than two percent. In some cases, some people say less than one percent. Some people say, you know, point five. I, I, no one knows exactly, but it's a very low adoption rate. And, and so to me, we want to emphasize people learning the fundamentals first. And Bitcoin is the is the fundamental crypto, you know, out of the two trillion dollars that are in the entire crypto asset class, one trillion is in Bitcoin, you know. And so there, there, it, it, there's there's a reason why. And also, I truly believe in, in the fundamentals of what Bitcoin represents is an opportunity as a store of value. I always talk about um, if we're truly going to build wealth in our community, particularly cross-generational wealth, then we have to own assets that we can pull equity out of as the value of those assets increase. And Bitcoin is a perfect example and opportunity for that. It's like buying real estate on the blockchain. There's only going to be 21 million minted. You're buying real estate on this block. And, and, and that's why, you know, we say buy back to blockchain, buy real estate on the block as that asset value increases. My, I've always said my goal is for every black person in America to hold at least a million Satoshis. A million Satoshi. So if you have two parents in the household, three kids, that's five million Satoshis in that household. Once you hit that baseline and hopefully continue to dollar cost average after that, go on and get into other coins. Um, and we can talk about those other coins. Uh, but to me, you got to set, it's just like building a house, set a foundation with Bitcoin first and establish that foundation before you go into other assets. Hill, do you think uh, Ethereum has a liquidity issue or is there another reason outside of the uh, fundamental reason that you gave? I think, I think Ethereum has a couple issues. Number one, it has a competition issue, has a gas fee issue. Um, it has issue, yeah. a, a, a use, a, you know, the use case with, with see, see, Bitcoin does what it does perfectly. Ethereum does what it does well, but the problem is there are other competitors to Ethereum that, and we don't know what the tech technology holds moving forward. So therefore we could see a future where the bottom falls out because other, other, you know, whether you're talking, it, I'm not even, it may not even exist yet. And that's the point. Ethereum may be my space. Bitcoin is not my space. Ethereum may be my space. And, and, but we don't know that I am big into risk management and, and, and mitigating your downside risk. Absolutely. 
if 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 the if the bottom falls out on Ethereum, it's going to go. The thing is, is that I'm in Ethereum, mm. and and in fact, I mine Ethereum. So clearly, I believe in Ethereum. I mine Ethereum instead of Bitcoin. So I'm not going to sit up here and say that uh, 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 that. I'm not poo-pooing Ethereum at all. L- listen, let me be very clear. I am mining, I am actively mining Ethereum and I am not mining Bitcoin. Okay, that's it. But I still think Bitcoin is the foundational asset in crypto. Let me ask you this. Um, we spoke about it last time, but I think it'll be good for anybody to get a refresher or if they wasn't here. You said that your goal is for every Black family to have how many Satoshis? Every Black million. person to have a million Satoshis. A so million. if you're a five-person family, that's five million in the household. Can you can you explain with Satoshi's? Is? Sure, 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 sure. So every there's there's going to be 21 million Bitcoin minted. Uh, that's the that's it. That's it. So that's what what drives value is scarcity, obviously. And the there are 100 million Satoshi's within every one Bitcoin. So I truly believe I don't know if it's three years from now, five years from now, ten years from now, we actually won't even be using the word Bitcoin. Because the, the, the actual price of Bitcoin, people won't be trading a Bitcoin. They'll be trading Satoshis uh, in the future. And people will be talking about Satoshis and they won't really be mentioning Bitcoin. It's just like, think about a bar of gold. There was a time when bars of gold were priced. Mm-hmm. The price of the bar of gold got so high that they said, we, we got to cut it into ounces. And that's what we're going to price. And so we don't price bars. We price gold in ounces now. We're going to, there'll be a point where, you know, Bitcoin will be so high that you'll be pricing it in terms of Satoshis. And so every Black family should hold at least a million Satoshis per person in that family. That's, to me, that's the base. That's the base minimum. But the beautiful thing, having almost 40 million Black folks in this country, if we did that, if you just do the math, we would literally control Bitcoin. And, and, and the world would have to come through us in that asset class. That's what creates leverage and power. And, and that to me is what the real opportunity is with Bitcoin, is for us to be first movers into this space. Uh, people keep talking about it, it's late, it's late, it's late, it's not late, it's 12 years in. It's super early, y'all, yeah. it's super early. Yeah. So, so that's it. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>